keep hearing that there is sort of a richer and poorer story in see in commercial real estate and in office particularly the newest kind of class a is still filling up nicely but the older stuff not getting as much demand is that so yeah thanks john uh yeah that is true we are seeing uh, real bifurcation in uh, quality really across all the cities and uh, newer products are certainly leasing up uh, much better uh, they're certainly holding their rental rates much better uh, and tenants and, and companies want to bring their employees back into, you know, highly amenitized space uh, in new buildings really across the country. So then what happens to the old stuff? Well, that's a really good question. Uh, some of it's, uh, you know, going to get repurposed into other uh, types of real estate. Uh, in some cases, it may be able to get converted into residential. Uh, that's starting, but it's going very slow. In other cases, it may get uh, completely knocked down and repurposed into to other things. Uh, could be hotels, could be retail. Uh, but, you know, in some cases, it's just not going to function as, uh, as office space going forward. How long does that take to play out, given that capital continues to be expensive and higher for longer means it's probably going to be expensive for longer? Is it, is it, does it get easier for potential investors to pencil out exactly how much those uh, expensive conversions are, are worth spending on, how long it's going to take for them to make money? It's going to take a while. So this is a, a long process, and the cost basis for the new buyers has to be cheap enough where they can you know, buy a building, get the right basis, then invest a fair amount of capital, and then get an appropriate return. And to your point about higher interest rates and, and higher costs, uh, the investors have to make an adequate return on that investment. And so either rents have to go up on the other things that they're trying to convert it into, or the cost basis of that building has to come down to make it cheap enough for them to get in to make the adequate return. So uh, one way or another, um, you know, it, the returns have to pencil for the new investors. And, you know, that's just a slow process. And then you've also got regulation in, in different cities about time to convert and, and the process to convert. So it, it's happening, but it's happening very slowly. Are we yet seeing that real capitulation on price in these older buildings that so many have been concerned about and concerned that some of that's going to hit regional banks, right, when we've got some of these loans on their books. Have we yet seen that since that's sort of what it might take to help with the cost basis on these conversions, but it would cause some pain for the people uh, who, who, who were in them before? Yeah, so you are starting and you have seen the banks taking more, uh, you know, charge offs and write downs for their commercial real estate book. And that's certainly been a concern in the marketplace, really, for the better part of a year now, certainly since uh, Silicon Valley Bank had their problems, you know, over a year ago. We've, we've seen increasing charge offs and write offs from the banks. So, you know, that's happening. And in some cases, they are uh, foreclosing on assets uh, from, you know, from, from borrowers who, uh, you know, can't make debt service and they're taking those back. And then, you know, they're having to turn around and uh, remarket them and sell them. So, as I said, it, it's an ongoing process. It's not one that's going to happen, I would say, very quickly. Uh, but we're probably looking at, at another 12, 18, 24 months of, of this, you know, taking place uh, in order to, to kind of right size uh, some of these problems. What's big tech doing? We've been hearing layoff headlines out of big tech for a while. And then there's the whole hybrid remote work thing that was going on there. But then certain cities seem to be coming back somewhat. Seattle, when Amazon said everybody back in the office, you really saw a small business around downtown pick up. Are, are those things balancing out or is it still a major drag in the areas where tech had really pushed into office over the past five, 10 years? Well, look, tech was the huge driver of office demand going back several years. And whether it was in Seattle, San Francisco, New York, uh, Austin, Texas, you know, big tech was clearly leading the charge on, on office usage and, and uh, leasing activity. Uh, and, you know, they were, in, in effect, pre-committing to hires that ultimately did not get hired. And so they found themselves long uh, too much space, and they're putting some of that space back on the sublease market. Uh, but I think the return to office is really unfolding. And I think today, you know, there's less talk about just pure um, hybrid work or, um, you know, people working fully remote. And they are back in the office certainly more. You've seen that come down from big tech 
over the last six to, to nine months. And that's certainly good for small businesses in and around the office buildings. I think today the bigger issue on the leasing front is really the economic uncertainty and the fact that interest rates have been extremely volatile and you know C-suites in large companies can't really make decisions about where the economy's heading. And I think ultimately that's probably a bigger factor today than the return to office discussion.